Um, my next guest has just returned from Miami Beach where she earned, maybe not just today, but uh, she earned the distinct title of being the first and only network floor man woman um, in convention history. She's also earned the distinction of being a Neiman Fellow at Harvard in 1968. And in earlier era, I might have made mention of the fact that she's quite lovely in appearance, but we don't emphasize those things these days. Um, I might still mention it, however. Uh, she really seemed quite wonderful on the, on the conventions, and I thought it'd be interesting to meet her. You probably wondered more about her than you were able to find out there. Will you welcome, please, NBC newscaster Catherine Mackin. <laughs> Was it my imagination, or were you dressed slightly differently at the convention? A little bit differently. Yeah. 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 But I know you. Because you're good clothes. Because you're good clothes. I'd know you anywhere. Uh, really? Yeah. You know what I wondered about, though? Weren't you just dead tired? How did you bear up under that thing? It was exhausting. Uh, but you just don't let yourself, or at least I didn't dare, you know, especially being the first woman. You, you know, drink a lot of coffee and try to keep going? They have free Pepsi every place, and that's what I drank. In fact, I gained three pounds doing the thing. You'd think that you'd lose, but I drank yeah. so much Pepsi. I gained weight. <laughs> you had the burden of being the, of being the woman. Yeah. And so you didn't want, if somebody had collapsed, you were not going to be the woman. No, you I were didn't never dare. Be the one who no, collapsed. and I wouldn't even complain, you know. Yeah. I didn't say that I was even tired. Did the other guys make fun of you uh, for being a woman? No. Um, a lot of those people are old friends of mine. Yeah. Uh, from, from all the networks, you know. Jo uh, John Hart and Dan Rather from CBS and Bob Clark and Frank Reynolds from ABC. How'd and, you get where you are? Mm, a lot of hard work, I think. Was it? Yeah. But how did, how did you get, why, why, are you, why were you the first woman there? <laughs> why was that funny? <laughs> I don't know. I suppose it was a, probably some sort of a group of male piglets in the band. <laughs> right it's my guess, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I was a newspaper reporter. It's the only thing I've ever done in my whole life is to be a reporter. Yeah, I've been a did, reporter since I was 18 years old. Did you go to old. journalism school then and uh, originally? Actually, I was an English major in history and economics minors in college. Uh -huh. And, Where was uh, it? University of Maryland. Uh huh. And so you, you were a reporter. Mm -hmm. I worked, that, it's uh, a big leap from that to network TV. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, I, I worked for the Hearst newspapers in the Washington Bureau uh, for about six years. I covered mm -hmm. the White House and I covered Congress. Yeah. And so it was a, sort of a logical progression. It was something I always wanted to do, to go into television reporting. Yeah. And at one point, I decided I would try to do it and did. Yeah. Were you nervous about the whole thing at all? Scared? Um, Going out there on the floor and doing a man's job. Yeah, I have to tell you, at the very end, I really was. Uh, I went down there just thinking that, uh, you know, that this was really uh, an ideal situation, someone who covers politics to have all of these politicians in one great room, you know, and mm -hmm. it couldn't be anything but a lot of fun. And, uh, but, I, you know, but when I got down there, everybody kept saying how important it was and went yeah. over and over again. So that by the time uh, Sunday rolled around, it finally had gotten to me. You know, but, uh, uh, some of my male colleagues confided in me that they felt the same way, that they were nervous. What are they, where does the fear come from? What are they afraid will happen or go wrong? Well, maybe that, that all of a sudden, you know, you would forget everything you had ever known or learned mm -hmm. in your life and that suddenly you wouldn't be able to do anything, which of course doesn't happen because you begin to do things by instinct, if nothing else, as soon as you're out there. I'd be afraid that, the, yeah, that I, there'd be something I was supposed to know that I didn't, that somebody would say something about, you remember the such and such incident in 68, and I wouldn't know what they were talking about. And yeah, it's true, you do say, have to Oh, recall. yeah, I remember that, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what do you do if you and, uh, and another network guy, um, or suppose you're NBC, suppose you and Frank Reynolds both go for somebody who's hot at that moment, they want on. Uh, do you flip a coin, or does he suggest alphabetical order, or how do you go about that? It actually happened once. Uh, usually, I, I'd like to think that NBC, I think we were like a step ahead, or at least a half a step ahead of the story, so it didn't happen too much. You say but your once, network was ahead of ours? Oh, excuse me. Well, yours was doing it in a different manner, oh, so. Okay. <laughs> that makes it all right. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, at one point, uh, with Governor Hearns of Missouri, I'd interviewed him twice, so I wasn't really that anxious about, you know, or uptight about doing it again. Mm -hmm. And I got there, and a, a reporter from another network was there, and I thought that it was polite just because he had been there. But that thing that, you know, that we wear on our heads, uh, you have producers and directors talking to you the whole time. Mm -hmm. So they said, was I ready with Governor Hearns? And I said, well, yes, I'm standing here waiting, but someone else was here before me. And they said, uh, well, you know, we'll just go in. And I said, well, he, but he was here first, you know, so finally uh, we waited and waited for them, and uh, they were just taking too long, so we jumped in with it. 
Were there any, is, is, a, is a battle possible, though, between the, the network people? If they, have you ever heard of them pushing each other pushing, out of I the way? I think that sometimes they do do that. I didn't see any of that this time around. I think it d just depends on the personalities of the individuals. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, and I think that... What if you decided right. to interview someone from another network suddenly? Just to, could you have done that? Would, that have, would they have thought that was funny if you interviewed I another network? I don't think they would have thought that was funny. Probably not. <laughs> Good thing Do they I'm think not. it's funny here that you're interviewing me? <laughs> Probably. I, I don't know. I never thought of that. Is there a terrible sense of competition among the networks about who's, who's watched on the conventions, especially? Oh, yes. There is? Terrific competition. Oh, that's how much I know. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that. I, this is indelicate, I suppose, but how, how on earth uh, do, do you, can you go to the bathroom <laughs> when you've got all that stuff on and all that big <laughs> difference? Uh, you have to walk a large, a long distance. Uh, with all of the planning that they did down there and these enormous... Uh, trailers and what have you, that each of the networks set up, they didn't make any provisions for that. So you had to walk about four city blocks to get to the places. Really? There was no, they don't think of their floor people as human and, uh, and they guess, hadn't provided uh, for that? They didn't provide for that, no. Yeah. Did you have to ask permission to go? Or, or you almost do, yeah. Yeah, yeah you have to, uh, they have to, to know exactly where you are at all times. <laughs> uh, you know that story of the... <laughs> <laughs> if you wouldn't, you don't have to tell them everything where you are. <laughs> Who was it on Broadway who, who had, was carrying a transmitter microphone and went into the bathroom and forgot to turn the sound off? I think it was, it was Anna Maria Alberghetti, I, I believe it was. I think she's probably admitted this publicly. I hope that she's lived it down and now I'm bringing it up again. And during the second act of whatever it was, people heard the most unusual, <laughs> um, you know, plumbing and all that stuff. Well, I'm so glad I mentioned that. We'll be right back after this message.